Hello, this is Father Louis Skirty, again here at my southern parish, St. Cecilia's Clearwater, with two members of the parish staff that are just exemplary examples, maybe I repeated myself, but that's all right, of how a dynamic parish operates. Uh, we, the first episode, we focused on a lot of what Kim does, and now we're going to focus a little more on what Carlos Hernandez does. So Kim Pashinsky and Carlos Hernandez. Thank you very much, Carlos, for being here. Again, Kim, thank you. Um, give an overview of what your title is, and then specifically how that falls into the parish. Thank you, Father Lou. As I said at the, at the first segment of this uh, the, uh, interview, I am the Director of Stewardship and Evangelization at, here at St. Cecilia. As a Director of Stewardship and Evangelization, I am responsible for uh, all the financial campaigns happening here at, at, at the parish, oh, at the parish that. level, Interesting. and also at the diocesan level, okay? okay. Um, but this is something that is not a, a, my unique responsibility, and I, I work by myself. No, that requires to put a system in place, a platform in place where everybody is involved. And uh, so uh, set the strategies and uh, work with both the staff and the community to achieve our goals. In addition to that, I oversee all the projects happening in, in the parish. Mm. So some people might think that when you work in a church environment, well, the only thing you do is pray, which is not the case. So we are so blessed that we are here in the church. We are technically within walking distance from, from the church, mm -hmm. but also there are so many things that are happening on a daily basis, you know? Things that, that require replacement, that require fixing, a, like a sound system, like a, the roof, a, I mean, maintenance. So different projects that are happening on a, on a daily basis. And I also responsible to work side by side with our staff and also the diocese in order to make sure that the parish is well taken care of. And as the director of evangelization, I work side by side with Kim Pichinsky, who is my right hand and I am your right hand. So working together, putting together those strategies and looking ahead to see how can we, uh, uh, I mean, bring to you the things that are going to help you to grow spiritually and also to get closer to our parish. Mm, great. How did you originally get involved with St. Cecilia's? Okay, so I've been involved with the Diocese of St. Petersburg as a parishioner and also as a, as a member of the staff in this case of St. Cecilia for over 25 years. And I actually oh. met Kim Pechinski over 20 years ago. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and... Uh, I have been very active with the Diocese of, of St. Petersburg in, in, I mean, several initiatives, you know. Also, I met Deacon Will Huertas over 20 years ago as well. And Deacon Will is, just a reminder, our parish administrator. Exactly, exactly. So then, uh, with all the experience that I developed through all these years, both in the professional uh, and the private sector and the church, in November uh, 2022, so I mean, we uh, so the opportunity to be part part of Saint Cecilia was presented to me by by Deacon Will Huertas and the church. I accepted, that, and uh, I have been blessed to be to be working for Saint mm. Cecilia for over uh, a year. And that happened, uh, Father Lou, at the same same time that I was discerning. Uh, to start my formation as a permanent deacon. Oh. And that formation started last year. Actually, my first class was in uh, the Labor Day weekend of 2023. And uh, I'm in the second semester. And God will, I will be ordained as a permanent deacon in 2027. Wow. And I hope I'll be here. Amen. You will be here. That's wonderful. <laughs> yes. Good, good. So how often do you meet as, okay, we're going off topic, but we're, this is sure. a relevant. Uh, how often do you meet uh, in your diaconate formation classes? They call them classes? Okay. The, the permanent diaconate formation program in the Diocese of St. Petersburg consists of, consists of the academic formation 
and also the spiritual formation. So the program is provided by uh, through the Saint Leo University, and uh, and I'm pursuing right now a master in theology in, in Saint Leo, a graduate program. So I go to class to Saint Leo once a month, which is usually the first Saturday of the of the month. But it's once a month we just spend the whole day over there and uh, attending classes, and and then after that you have to like a a study, present your projects, your essays, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and once a month we meet for our spiritual formation. So then, at that moment, it's not a San Leo. So uh, the aspirants, which is we are eight aspirants right now, we get together with our uh, the, the director of the diaconate, and uh, I mean, in order to grow in the faith, but do it together. And in addition to that, Father Lou, so you have a, a, a spiritual advisor and you meet with your spiritual advisor once a month and you have a, 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 a mentor deacon that you meet with that de- mm. mentor deacon once a month. Because, I mean, so you want to definitely, you know, not, not only being, being like a form in the, in the academic area, but also you want to continue growing, you know, in, in your spiritual side. And that deacon uh, mentor will help you, you know, to get there mm. in conjunction with the uh, spiritual advisor. The, the diaconate started in the Acts of the Apostles. That's where we have the early beginning examples of it. And it basically were men, and we're going to talk about that in a second, men who were elicited by the apostles to serve at table and to share the word. And, and I remember when I was a deacon, those two words were so significant for me, and they were on my, my brochure, my, my, my program. Um, and I think that's very important for you as audience to know the ministry of the word and ministry of the table. So why don't you just explain what they are? The ministry of the, of the word is the ministry where you communicate the word of God. When we go, when we go to, to church, okay, so everything starts with the word. We listen to the word. We the 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 lector proclaim the the, the 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 word of God. We listen the gospel from the priest. We listen the homily, and then we go to the ministry of the table, which is the Eucharist. But we need to remember something, and uh, when Jesus was still. In Mary's womb, and Mary went to visit Elizabeth. Saint John the Baptist, that was inside the womb of Elizabeth, first he listened the word of Mary. He listened the word. Of yes, Mary. he's the first you one know? I heard it. That's exactly the first time, and, and and it happened the same thing. You know, after after our Lord uh, 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 died and then was risen from the cross. Remember that he was walking with the disciples. Emmaus? Yes, yes. And they were listening the word. And then when did uh, did recognize Jesus? When he broke. Ah, uh, the, the bread, yes. So yes. Then those two ministers are very important. Very the word and also and the word and also the ministry of the table. When we get together as a community and we share that blessing that was left to us as a legacy from our Lord Jesus Christ, that he becomes present in, in body, soul, blood, and divinity every time that we get together to receive it. And the idea is that the diac- diaconia means service, okay? Mm-hmm. So they are, deacons are assistants to the priest. They're not priests. They don't consecrate. They serve the Eucharist as, as the Eucharistic ministers serve it, but they serve it as, as part of the main ministry. And Deacon uh, mentioned that the priest reads the gospel. That is also eventually their prerogative to read and proclaim the gospel and then preach. I don't know where on, along the path of education that falls as far as the, the ministry is concerned, but that's the two main features of Correct. it. Uh, I want to get back to women. Um, there's a possibility that in the early church, women served as deacons. I'm not going to get into theological uh, rows about that, but... Uh, right now, it's only men. Yes. Uh, however, you're a married man. Yes, How I many am. children do you have? Well, I have two children. Two children. Okay. Yeah. Um, was your wife brought into your ministry at all? Did she have to say, 
yes, Carlos, you can do it, or no, you can't do it? Or? Absolutely, absolutely, Father Lou. Actually, she is uh, fully supportive from this. She's very happy and I'm proud that I'm going through this journey because we do it together. And actually, you know, uh, before you get ordained, if you don't get the approval of your wife, you don't get ordained. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yes, That's yes. great. So you don't get ordained, you know? That's so, great. So yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, she's, she's, she's with me 100% of the time on, on this. And, uh, and, I, and that's actually, you know, something that I feel blessed. I'm very thankful in, um, on having her, my wife, uh, on my side on this. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. That's great. And I met her first time last week. She may have met me before. But that's what usually happens. People meet exactly, me. Exactly. I'm one up there and they, they all exactly. come. To, and she, she was lovely. We met her at the retreat. It was, exactly. was very beautiful. Exactly. exactly. Uh, what is your reaction, Kim, um, to the ministry of diaconate, let's specifically say at St. Cecilia's, um, be, before Carlos becomes a deacon, you, you have, we have a deacon in, involved with St. Saint Cecilia, Will, um, and I don't know if there were other deacons in the past. Uh, well, Deacon Paco is here. Right oh, now, okay, so good, good. So I don't know him too well. Yeah, Deacon Paco just actually joined us. Okay. He's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So um, having deacons as part of our, our clergy really helps because there's so many times when a, with I, with my ministry, having somebody who just needs an extra hearing of like from a clergy member mm -hmm. and the deacons are able to come and they're able to give some advice. And I think it's also really great because they have the advice of being a married man. They have children. They understand a little bit of reality. Um, so it's, it's to me, it's a, an additional blessing for us to have deacons. Mm. And I really encourage people who are discerning an opportunity to serve the church in a, in a capacity that allows them to go a little bit step ahead or above. I shouldn't say, because we're all the same, but giving that extra spiritual Oof. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. You know, we're Italians so with a little extra spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just yeah. a little extra spice in there. So <laughs> that helps with the with our flavor of our, our ministries here at the church. And I completely support deacons. I know a lot of people will say to me, well, you work in the church and you serve. What about you? And I'm like, I serve. And I really am excited about how I serve because I feel as though Jesus's followers, the first were women, and I'm able to serve in my, my capacity as someone who's caring and compassionate and walking along and with my brothers who are clergy members. And it, it's, it to me has been a wonderful mm, journey. That's great. Um, I'm encouraging you, the, the men in our audience, I'm specifically speaking to men because as Kim mentioned, the deacons are men uh, and, and priests are men. That's our church right now. No controversy over that. But um, tell, our audience, what a man who wants to become a deacon would have to go through. What are the steps in this diocese? They may change a little bit for each diocese, but specifically in this diocese, what are the primary steps exactly. that he would have to undergo? Perfect. So before I before I go and answer your question, another thing that I would like to mention in, in regards to the the permanent diacon information is something really good that the diocese of St. Peter St. Petersburg has is that the wife is involved in that formation. The wife goes with the go, goes with the aspirant, the, the aspirant to be a deacon to those spiritual formations. So mm. I mean, is so that means that when the the the, the, the uh, I get ordained as a deacon, all of this would be something familiar for with, with my wife. Yes, you know? yes, that is yes. spiritual formation. The 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 I mean the the. What, uh, what is the compromise that I'm making with the church, with God and the community for the rest of my life, you know? Mm, so mm, and she's mm. a, a, a definitely a big part on that formation. That that defies the idea of an all-boys club. Or, exactly. you know, it's, it's not, it's not exactly. which is important. Okay, exactly, Father Lou. And uh, so going, going back to your question, if you feel that call, that you want to, let's say that you are, curious about the the permanent diaconate the diocese in petersburg they have a, a they, they they do every two years a three meetings 
uh, that they, they call it the St. Stephen gathering, okay? Mm. So those meetings, in, when you go to that, that, that meeting, you don't need to go to the three meetings. You go, that meeting is pretty much to get information. You want to know what a deacon is. You want to know what, I mean, what is the difference between being a deacon or being, let's say, an altar server. You want to get more information. You are curious. And then you go with your wife. If you, for example, like, you, you like what you, what you heard, then you continue attending, with, let's say, between four and five additional meetings, okay, where they give you more information. In those meetings, you get introduced to the liturgy of the hours, you pray together, they give you more detailed information about what, a, what, what being a deacon is. And then after those meetings, if you say, okay, I want to pursue this, I want to, I mean, definitely, I, I, I want to apply, then they'll give you all the paperwork, it's an application form, where you mm. need to put together uh, all your sacramentals. Uh, you need you need to like uh, put together a bio of yourself, okay? Which is a history of your life. Is you were, let's say that 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 the first memory in your life is when you were two years old. Then you go from that moment until today. Mm. And not only that, your wife she needs to write a letter about who you are. She's not going to type that letter. She's not going to any computer. She's going to write it with her hand. She's going to sign it. She will put it inside an envelope. And then you put that all of that together with your package. And you send it to the, the, the office of the diaconate. Very important. All that paperwork, all that application needs to go with a, a form who needs to have the signature of your pastor. So it's a, it's a requirement. Then after you do that, you go to a psychological test. And we just spend the morning in the, in the diocese uh, because it's a test which is close to 600 questions. You answer all those questions. Then two, three weeks later, you will meet with a psychologist who already had the results for those that exam. Then and uh, you get together, you talk, you discuss. And after you go through all that process, then it's a matter to wait because you will receive a letter and that letter will have a, an approval or will say no. And uh, if you get approved, then now you go to the second step, which is uh, getting all the documentation to get into the University of St. Leo. If you have a bachelor's degree, then you need to get all the documentation, your transcripts, all of that, and then submit all the information that that you need in order to start with the academic uh, formation. But the Diocese of St. Petersburg is very helpful. There will be someone going side, side by side with you every single step of the way. So mm. I encourage, you know, uh, uh, all the, the men in the diocese, if you feel that you have that call, give it a try. Give it a try and uh, uh, because uh, I, can, I can personally say that this is this is a wonderful journey, wonderful journey because Father Lou was talking about service, and uh, we want to be imitators of Christ, and to be the best imitator of Christ is to be ready to serve whenever is needed. Mm -hmm. He's already preaching. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that wonderful? You have a lot of information. Thank you, Carlos. Thank Excellent. You. And Kim, thank you for your input today. Uh, I'll be here a few more days. Who knows what, I'll, what else we'll shoot before I leave. But uh, this has been wonderful. I'm honored to have both of you. Kim, thank you very thank much. You and so your much. ministry, love Carlos, God bless you. God bless you. And my love to your wife. Hey, and and to your husband, John, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we had lunch with John the other day. And he and Jerry had a lot to talk about. Very, very helpful. Does he get involved here at the church? He actually is my catechist. And uh, he's been on every one of my trips that I've done. For, again, if our spouses aren't involved yeah, with us, yeah, we exactly cannot right. do what we do. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. God bless you. Thank you. This is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. Uh, if you hear, want to hear from us, fatherlouisgurdy at hotmail.com. And I'll put the St. Cecilia's website on our byline. God bless you. Join us again and keep the word 